Hello, this is the health and wellness spot. I am Dr. Lewis Muchile, and today I'm going to shift my attention to the kidneys. What are kidneys? What are the roles of the kidneys in our bodies? What are the foods that destroy the kidneys? And what are the foods that can help you rejuvenate your kidney? So, before I start, I'll say that uh, my attention goes to sugar. Why sugar? Because most of the problems that uh, occur with our kidneys arise uh, due to a condition called diabetic nephropathy. Now, the kidney has different uh, portions and, uh, and, 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 and parts. One of these parts, which is the major or the functional unit of the kidney, is called the nephrons. Hence the name diabetic nephropathy, which means the destruction of these nephrons as a result of diabetes or sugar. Okay? So therefore, kidney problems start with sugar. Most of the kidney problems arise from consumption of sugar, and that is diabetes. So sugar destroys capillaries that supply the kidney. If you have a look at the kidney, this is just but a, a diagrammatic representation, but if you take a good look at the kidneys, you realize you have the renal arteries, the renal veins and other capillaries that supply the kidney with blood and nutrients and also that uh, 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 supply blood from the heart to the kidneys for filtration before it goes back into your body. So sugar destroys uh, these capillaries and that causes infiltration of proteins or leaking of proteins into the system and that's why a major condition or a major symptom for kidney problems is edema in your feet. So you have these swollen feet and if you press inside then you leave, you let it go, it comes out. It's called pitting edema. So that's a major symptom or sign of uh, kidney problems. So avoid sugar and protect your kidneys. So that is an introductory part of this video. Now, again, before I talk about anything, I have to talk about the functions of the kidneys. So what does the kidney do uh, in your body? Now, the function of this organ called the kidney is one, fluid balance. So the kidney is involved in filtration and reabsorption of fluids. So once it does this uh, process, then it causes a balance in your intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, okay? So that you don't have an imbalance between the fluids causing you hypertension and uh, edema. Number two is filter blood. So renal arteries bring in blood uh, uh, from the system, from the body, into the kidneys for filtration. Then after this filtration and removal of uh, waste products and uh, unwanted substances like protein, then the blood goes back into your system. So number two is filtration of blood. Number three, we have uh, removal of waste. So the kidney is uh, the home of urine, formation of urine. So the kidney is involved in formation of urine and therefore urine is uh, like a product that carries waste from the body outside. Okay. So this is the like urea, the protein, small proteins and, uh, and all that, but majorly urea. So that goes out through urine. So that is excretion, basically. Then number four, uh, the kidney also plays a role in control of blood pressure. Now there's a, a system called RAS, R-A-A-S, which is renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now this is a system in the kidneys that the kidneys use to regulate your blood pressure. When pressure goes up, then the kidneys release uh, a fluid so that the pressure goes down and electrolytes. Then when the pressure goes down, the kidney do uh, carry out reabsorption of these nutrients, of these uh, electrolytes and water. So your blood pressure goes up. So that system helps the kidney to regulate blood pressure. And then again, another function of the kidney is uh, bone development. So here, the kidney also uh, plays a role in uh, conversion of uh, inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D. So the liver and the kidney play a similar role in conversion of vitamin D into its active form. And vitamin D plays a role in different uh, uh, hormonal changes or calcium absorption uh, in your body. Again, vitamin D plays a role in uh, 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 hormone formation, so that plays a role in sexual function, okay? Then, again, the kidneys 
have uh, erythropoietin. They produce a hormone called erythropoietin. Now erythropoietin is a hormone that activates the bone marrow so that it can produce uh, more red blood cells and that will uh, inhibit or block you from getting into anemia state. So basically those are the functions of the kidney and uh, yeah. So now after understanding the functions of the kidney, now at least we can talk about uh, how you will get to understand or how you get to know that you have kidney problems. So we said apart from infections and, uh, and, and, and uh, changes in your body, the major uh, nutrient or substance that causes problems in the kidney is sugar. Okay? So once sugar gets into your capillaries, destroys them and destroys your, your kidney or the kidney is exposed to now uh, uh, diabetic nephropathy, now you start experiencing these symptoms of early kidney uh, failure and that's our basis today. So our basis today is early signs of kidney failure or kidney disease. So how do you know you have an acute kidney injury? Okay. So basically, uh, all these functions of the kidney are the ones that will, will, will possibly reverse. Once they become, uh, once they start to reverse, for instance, uh, uh, the EPO. Once the kidneys are affected, EPO goes down, so you start getting into anemia. So basically, you just reverse the functions of them the functions of the kidney, okay? So now, what are the signs of kidney failure? Number one sign is uh, urine output. So there's a decrease in urine output. Why? Because you have dysfunctional uh, uh, kidneys. Once you have dysfunctional kidneys, uh, that means uh, your urine output, because it does filtration and reabsorption and uh, secretion of fluid and electrolytes, that means if it is impaired, then the functions that it carries out in order to produce uh, quality urine are impaired and therefore you'll have reduced urine input. And this uh, is for people who have these conditions, who are already experiencing it, they will tell you that they have uh, this uh, problem. Now, also, once they produce this urine, it's in very less amounts, but again, it has high content of, uh, of nutrients because they are not being filtered back into the system. So it has high content of proteins, it has high content of urea, it has high content of glucose. So if you take a urine test, you'll get all this uh, glucose, urea, and, uh, and, uh, and, and a protein in your urine. Okay? So once you get that, you start suspecting there's a problem in your kidney and in the filtration process of the kidneys. Number two is frequent urination. Now you also have a problem uh, with the kidneys. That means sometimes fluid just goes, fluid just goes through. So you'll have this frequent urination, but again, it is very limited urination. So you're urinating very small amounts and quantities of urine, but all the time. Number three also, the pitting edema that we talked about. Pitting edema means uh, protein filtration has happened in your capillaries. Why? Because they have been affected by sugar, then now protein is seeping through. Once it seeps through, goes to the system, is deposited down into your extremities and then your feet start to swell. Once they start to swell, if you press them inside, it goes like a hole, then it comes back into its normal position. So now you start suspecting again kidney problem. Also, there's edema in the face, a swollen face, uh, which has no explainable cause. Another uh, sign is ammonia, smelling urine. Now, so your urine starts to smell ammonia. Why? Because now, you're breaking down uh, protein. Now you're breaking down protein, but you're not filtering it back, or you're not uh, uh, releasing uh, the, the, the urea. So there's too much uh, ammonia, or there's too much urea in your, in, your, in your urine. So it starts to smell very bad. Now, ammonia has uh, uh, a certain effect in your body. When it starts to accumulate in the blood, uh, it goes, it, it, it gets it's an access to the brain. Once it goes to the brain, then you start experiencing these symptoms of uh, a mad person, okay? And that's what we call hepatic uh, encephalopathy. So you have high content, the liver is breaking down protein to give you uh, uh, ammonia, and this ammonia is not being converted to uh, urea, okay? And then this ammonia or ammonium, so this ammonia gets into your blood system and is pumped into the head. Once it gets into the brain, it starts affecting brain cells, and you experience all these signs of a mad person. Good. Now next, cold. So you experience cold all the time. Why are you experiencing cold? 
because remember the kidneys play a role in production of red blood cells. Now since the kidneys are impaired, then your bone marrow does not produce the required amount of red blood cells. So you get into anemia because of low red blood cells. Once you get into this, uh, once you get into anemia, then now you start experiencing cold all over and every time. Your, your, your extremities are cold, your body is very cold. It's not chills, it's just cold. Your body is just, the, the temperature goes down because of anemia. Then we have itchy skin. Again, itchy skin is because of accumulation of uh, bile salts and, uh, and, and bilirubin because they're not being cleared from the body. Now uh, they start causing you uh, itchy skin. And then tiredness and darker urine. Darker urine is because of accumulation of electrolytes in your urine because they are not being filtered. And tiredness is because of anemia. Okay, even after sleeping, this person wakes up very tired. Why? Because there's low uh, supply of uh, glucose and nutrients and even oxygen to the body and because of low uh, red blood cell count. So basically, those are the signs that you start uh, suspecting that this guy must have or should be uh, experiencing a problem with the kidneys. Now, now you have all these signs. What do you do? Because you just can't sit there and say, ah, okay, then... I have a kidney problem and now uh, it's okay. So what do you do? It's not okay to have a kidney problem because the kidney is an organ that plays major roles in the system uh, uh, that will help you uh, attain longevity. So what do you do? The first thing you do is once you experience these symptoms, start cutting down your carbohydrate intake. Okay, Carbohydrates are sugars and sugars include honey, fruits, milk, because those are products that contain sugars. So milk contains lactose, uh, fruits and honey contain fructose, high content of fructose, and all other simple carbohydrates, uh, which we call sugar. So carbohydrates are the same things as sugars, okay? So you cut down carbohydrates uh, and, uh, and, and soy products, okay? Because of hormonal imbalances, and you go into organic products. So organic, going organic helps you rejuvenate your kidney because at the end of the video, I'll talk about uh, how to detox. So you'll realize going organic uh, produces uh, some nutrients or some compounds that have been proven to improve your kidney function and rejuvenation of your failing kidney. Number two, alcohol and smoking has to stop. You cannot have a kidney problem and you still drink alcohol. You're putting more pressure to the kidneys to excrete, okay? And that will be a problem. Smoking is also uh, uh, dangerous to your health. It plays a very major role in kidney, lung, and liver diseases. So avoid smoking or stop smoking, actually. Then, the third one is uh, you moderate proteins. Now remember the kidney is the one that excretes urea and uh, uric acid, okay? And that is the end product of protein uh, metabolism. So if you keep eating high contents of protein, that is a problem. Why? Because it will not be excreted, so you'll accumulate ammonia in your system. And once you accumulate ammonia, then again you'll end up in hepatic encephalopathy and death, okay? So you should avoid that. Then, so the eggs, the fish, uh, the sardines, the meat products, the chicken, you should eat them in moderation because you already have an impaired kidney, okay? But they are the foods that you should concentrate on, though you eat them in moderation. Then vegetables, high content of uh, salads and all types of vegetables, but organic ones, okay? Not the ones that we purchase in the supermarkets. We have organic uh, vegetables and uh, cruciferous vegetables that are in high, uh, that have high content of potassium. And potassium has been proven to have uh, a rejuvenation effect in the kidneys and uh, 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 protective effect in your kidneys. So if you have a failing kidneys, consider eating high content of potassium, which is found in salads, vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, sorry, green bananas, and avocado. Okay, those are the ones that have high content of potassium that will help you protect your failing kidneys. Then. There are people who are on drugs that affect the kidneys, okay? So if you, have, if you are on any drugs, be it injectables or orals, you should talk to your doctor to at least uh, reduce the amount of the drugs or change the drugs to those drugs that do not uh, uh, affect the kidneys or are not excreted by the kidneys. Since you have a failing kidney, you can consider drugs that are excreted through bile system that will go into your stool or your feces or, or any other excretion mechanism apart from urination so reduce the number of drugs the amount of drugs and also protect yourself by uh, avoiding some of these drugs and most of these drugs are hypertensive drugs 
like hydroclothiazide, those drugs that protect you or are supposed to, uh, are intended to lower your blood pressure, also affect the kidneys. Also some drugs that you take for pain, like uh, NSAIDs. NSAIDs are drugs like, uh, that are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are the diclofenax, the celecoxibs, the brufens. These are the drugs that we use on a daily basis, but these drugs affect the kidneys. And therefore, if you're on these drugs and you start experiencing these uh, signs of kidney problem, you should consult your doctor and know alternatives that are healthy for, you, for your body. Now, lastly, what are the foods that will help you to detox? Detoxification of the kidney, I already told you, you go organic, okay? Now, organic foods like garlic, uh, taking green tea. Green tea has been, uh, has been uh, found to have effects, good effects and good compounds that uh, protect and promote kidney rejuvenation. Then we have also cruciferous vegetables, as we mentioned. And then turmeric, blueberries, uh, tamarind. These are products that help you to clear urea from your body. And once they help you to clear this urea from your body, then you don't overload your kidneys. So kindly, uh, even if you want to make concoctions and use them, it's okay. Those are uh, uh, the compounds uh, or the, the foods that help you clean your, your kidneys. So basically those are the signs of acute kidney disease. And we'll see you in the next video.